What is up everyone? Thank you for joining me today. This is the new episode of Photoshop uh, Tips Tricks and today we have a question from Andrew Blair. He says what is your techniques for making an a photo look like an antique? That rustic feel is what he's asking and not so much so black and white but just that old antique look. I'm actually going to show you and uh, we're going to do it inside of Camera Raw. So we could do this numerous ways. We could actually open up this image through Bridge and open it in Camera Raw. But now with Photoshop CC, don't forget we have that open as a filter. Open as a Camera Raw filter. So we go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. So don't forget that we do have that option. Uh, those of you that are following me that have uh, Photoshop Creative Cloud, uh, Photoshop CC. Another word of advice, a double tip for you. A tip among tips. This is going to wind up being like a plethora of tips. <laughs> um, my advice is that now with Camera Raw ACR getting so powerful, especially with the newest release, I advise people use Photoshop for heavy editing, for heavy cloning, for, for layer masking. But everything else, I tell them to use Camera Raw. You might as well do all your image toning, your white balance, your temperature. It's going to be so much easier. You're going to find yourself doing more and more as Camera Raw uh, advances to the next level. You're going to you're going to save so much time and you're going to save so much effortless work doing it in Camera Raw. So this tutorial will be completely done in Camera Raw. So what I like to start doing is, is when I'm working on an image and I want to give it that antiquish look, that rustic feel, I, my tips are definitely starting off with the temperature. Okay, the first thing that you see in Camera Raw. I like to warm the image up. So I like to stick it and, and, and pull it to the right. Okay, and here's a word of advice. Okay. Everything I'm doing, you could follow along, but it's it's going to be up to you and your tastes as far as how much you want to pull these sliders. Everybody's going to be different. My results you may not be crazy about, but you may go back and do the same methods as me, but do different amounts. So this is really to taste. There's no right or wrong way to do this. A lot of things that I show in Photoshop are that way. It's really pretty much up to you how much you want to pull these amounts. So for me, we're going to go right about there. Okay. The next thing that I like to do is I like to pull down the contrast. Okay, so we're going to pull that quite a bit. The third thing I like to do is I like to suck. I like to, I like to slide down the saturation. Pretty much, we're going to suck the color out, but not all the way because what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit left and we're going to do vibration. Uh, um, not vi I'm sorry, vibrance. <laughs> we're going to do vibrance and we're going to pull the vibrance up. Vibrance is like another way of saying smart saturation. Okay, so we're going to really, really pull those colors back in without the, the image being overpowered. Okay, maybe warm it up a little bit more. Remember now, we're going for that artistic, we're going for that antiquish look, not not for the image to pop, okay? We're not going for that effect. The other thing I like to do also when I'm working on an image like this is to bump up the clarity. That's right. I like to bump the clarity up. And that also gives it an old aging look that you might be going after. The next thing I like to do is I like to do some uh, vignetting. There is two different ways to do vignetting. We have the post-crop vignetting here but we also have a lens vignetting. I actually like to do both and I'll explain to you why. So when we go to post crop vignetting we have more than one option here. It's defaulted at highlight priority okay but we have two other ones here. Paint overlay and color priority. We're gonna go with color and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go the opposite direction of I normally would to darken the edges. I think we're gonna go and brighten the edges but let's have some fun here let's maybe go for like an Instagram-ish look here since we're going for an antique-ish look. So I like to bump the vibr the um, vignetting up to white instead of as opposed to darkening the edges and maybe bump some feather here 
and the roundness and kind of maybe like make an Instagram-ish kind of a frame if that makes any sense those of you that know that use Instagram will know what I mean by that term they have some of they they have these borders that are pre-programmed so we're gonna go for something like I think something like that what do you think that looks pretty cool and then we're gonna go back to the other vignetting and we're gonna darken the edges up inside the frame like so okay we are going to hit okay and we're gonna open it up in Photoshop and I'll show you the final result there you go kinda neat kinda fun um, there's definitely hundreds of ways to do this like I said you know you might want to put less clarity more clarity um, warm the image or up cool the image maybe a different kind of a frame different roundness this is just my example but you know you can play around with this and you can add your own ideas in here but playing it using my methods that I just showed you you'll be able to come up with a result similar to this uh, depending on your liking so this is my technique of making an image into something antiquish looking and older and vintage and kind of sucking the color out without sucking the color out completely and uh, giving it that aging look oh there's also one more thing I'd like to throw in here I almost forgot let's go back here's something that might just give it that touch that antiquish touch check this out I want to show you this here um, actually let's let's go back into let's go back into camera raw as a filter and I will show you I'll give you a little tip here we're gonna go back to the FX panel where we did the post crop vignetting but look we have a grain amount here for noise to give it that filmish grain that's definitely what old vintage photos had so here we have this smooth look from our DSLR but we're gonna add some grain like an old film camera would have okay it's funny I was talking to somebody the other day and we said you know as these cameras get better they have less and less noise but as Photoshop continues they have more and more options to add the grain and noise back in it's nice you know it depends on what you're doing but we're making an art an old vintage antiquish photo so I think adding the grain back in here gives it that realistic look look at that so we're gonna say okay and there we go that give that tops it off that gives us a nice look here let's zoom in yes yeah, doesn't have that look at that look at the look at the noise and the grain that's great so now it definitely does look like an aged image you could do dust and scratches like I said you know you could keep going and going I could even take this to another level um, it never ends with Photoshop so there you go so that's my techniques try it out like I said take my tips in the beginning of the video try to use camera raw more and more it is becoming very advanced it'll save a lot of your workflow it'll save a lot of your production time take care everybody and I will see you in the next Photoshop video bye bye now